with a lot of people looking to swap over to ranged after the Raptor Strike nerf, even if the nerfs aren't as bad as you might think, it's time to start looking at building a gear set to optimize your damage from ranged. Because let's be real, ranged hunters aren't getting a nerf anytime soon. The best slot guys you can find out there are decent, but some guides are either simply wrong or don't give you context to why a piece is considered best in slot, which means you could be making mistakes in your gearing if you're not using the spec or build that the guide has in mind. And as such, here is your best in slot guide to ranged hunter. Let's get a few things out of the way. At the point I'm making this video, both melee weaving with two one-handers as well as with a two-hander is simply dead if you're looking to maximize damage. As such, strength is a stat that gives us zero value. Second, the game is not solved yet. Sims are not functioning properly and we're still figuring out exactly what build and what gear performs the absolute best. As such, there are a few things that could change in the future. I'm currently making updated build guides that reflect the current best builds, so if that's something you're interested in, make sure to subscribe. Alright, let's take a look at the gear. For a snapshot overview of your best in slot gear, then this is it. Next, we'll go over explanations for each piece along with options if you aren't able to get the best in slot. For the head slot, we'll want to pick up the leather crafted piece. The on use effect is too strong to pass up on. Even if it's a bit time consuming, it's easy to obtain and should be one of the first items for everyone to pick up after the first run of Nomer. Until then, you can run Artemis Cow from BFD, which is technically better than the Crafting Helmet if the on use is on cooldown and you don't need the hit. For the neck, you'll want the epic neck from Nomer Gun Quests that is guaranteed dropped from the last boss. There'll be a lot of competition on this one during the start of the phase, but it'll be easier to get over time. Until then, we'll use the Warsaw Neck. For the shoulders, the Trog Slayer's Pauldrons are the undisputed best in slot. Until then, you can run the Leather Shoulders from Viscous Fallout, an off Agility Green, or the Revelers Spalders from Ultiman. For the Cloak, you'll want to run Prototype Parachute Cloak. Until then, get an off Agility Cloak or the Blood Drenched Drape from STV Event, which will synergize nicely with Exposed Weakness. We go for plus 3 Agility on Cloak. For the chest, there is no other option than Blaze Wind Breastplate from Tremors of the Earth questline in Badlands. The tier chest is okay, but not worth the agility we sacrifice. We go for plus 2 all stats on chest. For bracers, it's up for debate whether we want to run Forest Stalker's bracers from the Wars and Gulch Exalted or the Experimental Aim Stabilizers. Taking into effect the bonus we get from Aspect of the Lion, the Nomer Bracers still come out on top with how much attack power it provides with 38.8 attack power compared to 33.6 attack power from the Warsing Bracers. But then we have to take into account the crit value from the bonus agility as well. I think that the Nomer Bracers are slightly better now that we don't melee weave, but grab whatever you can get your hands on. We go for one agility enchant on Bracers. The glove slot is rather interesting. Ideally, we want to have three pairs of gloves in your bags. For all mechanical bosses, you want to use mechanist gloves. For non-mechanical, you'll want to use the Void Touch leather gloves. When the gloves are on cooldown, you want to use the Gauntlets of Divinity. Personally, I just opt to have my third pair of gloves ruined with Explosive Shot and swap to those during trash. You know, I'm just casual like that. We want to use plus 5 Agility and Shot on gloves. For our belt, we'll most of the time use Dark Vision Girdle. If you want to push your DPS rankings and gamble on getting the right buff, then the engineering belt will be better if you get the crit buff. The leg slot is up for debate. Either we'll run the tier legs or the trip runner dungeries. Take an aspect of the lion into account, the bonus attack power you get from not running any tier piece in legs and feet is 57.6 compared to 52 attack power you would get from the tier. Then the trade-off becomes whether you want the plus 1% hits with the tier or plus 0.7% crit from the bonus agility of the non-tier. Keep in mind that normal bosses are lower level than normal boss mobs, so hit loses a bit of value compared to later phases. But also, the value of intellect is not zero, especially if you can make it through the entire boss fight without having to use aspect of the viper. For boots, the same applies. We'll want to run either the tier boots or off agility boots. For the enchant, minor run speed offers too much quality of life in my opinion, but for fights where you can be completely still, plus 3 agility will allow you to pump harder. 
for rings, we'll want to go to 10 agility rings. That could either be from Ring of the Underwood or an off agility ring. Viable options on Tail Ben is the Warzung Ring, Falcon's Hook, or Iron Spine's Eye. For trinkets, we'll ideally want to run Avengers Void Pearl from BFD and Gyromatic Experiment 420B from the last boss in Nomer. Until we get the Nomer trinket, we can run the Tiger's Blood Talisman, and of course, if we have the Domesticated Attack Chicken, we'll want to run that whenever it's off cooldown. For the ranged weapon, we'll of course want to use the Epic Gun from the last boss in Nomer. Until then, your best bet is running a 3.0 Agility Gun, or simply the Crafted Gun from Engineering if there are no inexpensive BOE alternatives. For melee weapons, you'll want to run Vanquisher's Sword and Sentinel's Blade. The reason we want to run these weapons over an off agility two-hander is A, it's simply more attack power, but B, with two weapons, we can apply Dismantle to both weapons and we can use lesser wizard oil on both weapons. Serpent Sting scales 1 to 1 with spell power and Arcane Shot has a spell power coefficient of 43.5 and 140% crit scaling, making bonus spell power absolutely worth picking up. I'll link the full bit set in the description and we'll make sure to make updates if things change in the future. I'm also looking to make additional build guides for the SOD Hunter after having done more testing. If that's something you're interested in, make sure to subscribe. But that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time.